Hey everyone, as promised, we um, we managed to get Remy to give us a rundown on the Sea Zone um, and the whole monster power pack that uh, Lotus are doing in conjunction with Enerdrive at the moment in their setups. So this next video is going to be a bit of Remy going through the Sea Zone, um, how to change colours on the switches, how to do all those little customised settings, and telling you what they can do for you and and how you can upload and and change all those little bits and pieces and make it custom to what you want. At the same time, going through the whole uh, the whole power pack, the um, MPPT chargers, the DC to DC, the AC, the inverters, everything like that, the switches, breakers, everything pretty much so you can have a, have a decent knowledge on what's actually in your van. And then from there, um, you can always look back at this if you ever have a problem and you need to go, hmm, what did Remy call it? He, yeah, so, or if you're on the phone to enter driver or, or whatever it is, if you ever need to, yeah, you can use this. You can almost use this as like a handover video for your 12 volt setup. Um, to go back to look at at any point in time if um, your dealer didn't give you a good one or if your um, you didn't record it or anything like that so you, yeah I suppose you can consider this as a kind of a handover to the 12 volt segment of your caravan anyway hope you enjoy it if you've got any questions um, chuck them down in the comments get on to Remy and we'll get them answered and if there's tons of questions to do with the 12 volt side of things we can always uh, do another video on it but if not I hope you enjoy it um, also coming up um, we'll be we'll be starting the travel so next month we're full time traveling in the van with the ram the boat everything like that so you will see a lot more uh, I suppose you could call them episodes coming from now on us documenting our travels and um, working around Australia and everything like so yeah hopefully you enjoy it and that's uh, coming up very soon anyway guys hope, I hope this is uh, informative and you get something out of this um, and it helps you out in some way and I hope you enjoy it. Yeah guys, it's Rennie here from Enerdrive. I'm here today with Tyson. He's got his Lotus van here with us today. We're going to go through a bit of the C-Zone kit so you guys can understand it a little bit better, going through everything you need to know in your particular Lotus vans. Now, we'll go over everything, but if you've got questions, feel free to reach out to us. We're always more than happy to help you. Right, let's dive in and have a look at it. So, getting started with the screen, guys. So, single touch, obviously, lights it all up for us. Now, the big thing with C-Zone's always been the modes. So the modes is your day-to-day -day operations and how to use the van, right? So up here we've got your camp mode, night mode, all your modes across the top there. Single button press quickly changes how the van's gonna operate. So the idea with these is that it should be a single button press for most of your changes throughout the day. If you need to make a change to something else throughout the day, you can go into your control and you can control every single circuit within that van individually. It shows you all the load figures of what everything's using as well, which is really nice. So with the modes, we set them up how we would expect you guys to use the van. Now, I'm not saying that I'm gonna get it right every time because I guarantee you I'm not. The idea behind it is that we've got a general understanding of how you're gonna use it, but there's a fair chance that you guys are gonna use it a little differently than the way that we expect. Now, if that's the case, and say in our camp mode, we've got a particular light coming on that you don't want to have on, or say our, you know, all of our main lights in here have just come on, but you don't want those to come on. You just want the, the light in the shower to come on, or you know, whatever it may be. It's not a problem. All you need to do is just get in touch with us. Let us know what you're trying to achieve within these modes. We'll make that change for you, send it to you. It's really quick and easy to upload into the unit. You just use a little flat blade screwdriver at the top of the screen. The screen will pop away. There's a USB point in the back here. You just insert it, do the update through the screen, all good to go. So that's something of any changes you guys wanna make with it. Your first set of changes we do for you, completely free of charge, whatever it may be. It's within you know a certain degree, we can't reinvent the wheel with how the system's gonna work. But that being said, you know we can make as many changes as you guys need. Uh, we're more than happy to do that for you guys. So that's obviously our modes across the top here. So as an example, when I've gone into our sleep mode here, you can see the screen's gone completely dark. Now, if I do need to get back into it, you can tap it, it will come back up for you. It's a really nice update that C-Zone's done with the, the operation of everything there. Um, so that's our modes. That's the main sort of portion of what you guys will generally be using day to day. Now, as an example, uh, all of our lights and everything like that. So generally we've got the dim up and dim down functions. You can just simply tap things to turn on. So I can turn off all of my interior lights or I can turn them back on by pressing those guys there. Alternatively, if I want to take them to a particular level, I just press and hold that down and then I can manually dial those lights to whatever level that I want them to be at. 
So nice and quick and easy to make those changes there. And you can also see the little rings as we change the particular state of the particular state of the lights, it will either dim down or increase depending on how that's working for you. So moving out of that one, we'll go quickly into the monitoring of these guys as well. So you can see here we've got our battery. Now we're pulling a fair bit of current out of this guy at the moment. So we're actually pulling 62 amps. Now that's been offset a little bit by how much solar we've got. It's pretty clouded today. We're not getting the greatest solar conditions in the world. Um, that being said, you know, we're still running the air con. We're pulling 58 amps out of the system. We've got all of our lights on, our fridge, everything running. So we're being fairly power hungry would probably be the best uh, explanation for how we're using the van at the moment. And we're still only pulling 57 amps out, which is pretty impressive um, considering that we've got poor sun conditions and we're still putting in a fair bit of current. Um, you can see obviously at the top here, got our voltage of the batteries themselves at 13.15, current coming out 58, uh, percentage state of charge we're at 95%, remaining amp hours, temperature. It's all nice and self-explanatory for you. Um, now, if you ever were to lose power in the system or you shut the system down and you restart it, you will notice that your time to go and your percentage state of charge will both be blank. Now, that's nothing to be worried about. It just means that the system doesn't know where it is. It needs to be recharged. Once it reaches a full charge, this will automatically sync and get going again for you guys. So really quick and easy to do. Just make sure that if you ever lose power, don't freak out. You just need to basically get some charge back into that system. Worst case scenario, if you can't get any monitoring and you don't know what's going on with your system, you can just use the Bluetooth app on your phone to figure out what percentage state of charge roughly your batteries are at. Um, so, Again, same deal with our tanks. You can see we've got our percentages across the bottom here. Now, if I want a particular literage for our tank, you can just tap on it there. It gives us our percentage, literage, and the capacity of that tank right there. So really quick and easy there. Um, obviously, scrolling to another page. So the way we've kind of laid these ones out is that all your interior and day-to-day -day stuff is gonna be on that first page. Now, if there's exterior stuff that you wanna do, so say your exterior lights or your awning lights, rear work lights, anything like that, we put that on a separate page. Just makes it a little bit easier for you guys to sort of find what you need. And then obviously we've also got the uh, the last page here with the nodes on it. So if you needed to say turn a particular light on, it's single button operation there. Again, same deal. If you don't wanna have this page or you wanna have your own van there, we can do that. We just need to have pictures of your particular van provided so that we can manipulate these images to be correct for you guys. Again, we can do all that for you. It's not a problem. Um, but yeah, quick and easy operation, but that's, that's mainly most of the screen there. Um, we'll just cut to another bit now and I'll show you guys how to set up the Wi-Fi and link it into your iPads. All right guys, so we'll go through the Wi-Fi setup of these particular units and how you can link it to your iPad um, so you can use it while you're around the van, you know, quickly making changes. Basically, it mirrors exactly what the screen displays for you here. Now, keep in mind with this, you can't use it on an iPhone or an Android device. It is set only to an iPad at this stage. They are working on improving that so that they're gonna have uh, Android integration and also iPhone and everything like that coming in the near future. Uh, don't have an exact time frame on that, but it is coming, that's, that's as much as I know at this point. So setting it up, you just wanna tap your three little uh, lines up the top here, go into your settings, scroll down to the bottom there. You've got an option that says advanced. And then within there, you've got the wireless server option. So when you get into this one straight away, you should have a dip switch displaying there. You don't need to change this one at all. That's preset by us. You should have an option that says access point. Sometimes you may find this is in disabled or client mode. Just make sure it's in access point. That makes it so that it generates an SSID and a password for us, which are the two important parts that we need to set up your iPad. So naturally, when you would connect to a, uh, a Wi-Fi uh, off of your iPad that you haven't connected to before, you're gonna find this SSID, and then you're gonna input this particular password here. Now on your iPad, it's gonna pop up and say it doesn't have an internet connection. Now that's totally fine, and just tell it to keep the connection. From there, once you've got the connection and everything set up, all you need to do is open up your CZone 2 app on your iPad. Um, so I should have said that you just need to download that one first because obviously once we're connected to this, it's connected to the screen, but we don't have an actual Wi-Fi uh, internet connection as such. It's just a Wi-Fi connection to this particular screen. So from there, once that's connected, you've got the app downloaded. It's a simple matter of opening up the app. It'll ask you for a user and a password. Really, really simple. Your user is user and your password is password. Once you put those two in there, it'll pop up and say downloading configuration. And from there, every other time that you use that iPad to connect this device, as long as your Wi-Fi is turned on and you're connected to the Wi-Fi of this screen, you'll be good to go and everything will just pop up. It'll mirror almost identically 
what you see on your favorites page here. Be a few more icons because we can fit more of them onto an iPad screen, but it mirrors a very, very similar display as to what you're looking at here. Okay guys, uh, so the brains of this system is obviously you've got your screen which does all your control. This is the unit here that actually controls your network. So this is known as a, a COI or a combined output interface. Um, so they're a really nice bit of unit, uh, kit, really easy to operate. Um, so essentially what happens with these is there's two things. We've got a, a, a MOSFET switch as such. So the MOSFET is what switches your circuit to be on or off. It's a load monitored device, which is why you see your load on the screen. So your fridge is drawing four and a half, six amps, whatever it may be running at the time. The other advantage of that is that we set those limits. So if we put a 10 amp fuse into this circuit, say circuit one as an example, which is our fridge, that one there I set to a 10 amp limit. The soft fuse that we have sitting in behind the unit itself, which is what's switching that one on and off, I set that one to around a seven and a half limit. So the advantage of that is that if I have a circuit that's going out of spec or it's drawing more current than what it should, the MOSFET will blow and it will display on the screen telling us that we have a circuit that is over current. You can acknowledge it, it will reignite that circuit and get you going again. The really nice thing is you don't have to do anything with this fuse. Now, that being said, it is really nice to actually have these fuses here because it's a hard catch. So if we were to ever have a situation where you had a dead short, cabling was to rub against something else and it was to short out, the fuse there is gonna protect the circuit and it won't do any damage to the unit at all. The other really nice thing that we've got is that if I pull this fuse out, you can see above here on circuit two now, we've got an alarm showing and it's actually flashing red. Now, if we just duck back over the screen quickly, it's awesome. You can also see here that I've actually got a blown fuse indicator saying that my carafan now is not gonna operate because fuse number two is blown. Now, if I take that fuse and I put that into the upper position, the carafan started and you'll also see on the screen there, it's now showing us that it's in override. So if you were to ever have a situation where you have a problem with the circuitry, the screen isn't responding, you can't get the keypad to work for whatever reason, this entire unit has an override, complete get out of jail free card. So if we're stuck in the middle of nowhere, we can't get, you can't get onto us, you know, you can't get the support that you need, you still have the ability to physically remove these fuses and put them into circuits so that you can get the van up and running again. So you've got your fridge, you've got your lights, you've got your day-to-day -day necessities, everything that you're gonna need, you can still do straight out of the unit if you ever needed to. So that being said with this as well, if you were to ever have an issue with this particular module, You'll see up on the top right hand corner here, we've got a dip switch position. So the dip switches on these guys, they're quite small, it might be a little bit difficult to see. But that being said, if you were to ever have a problem with these, it's really, really simple because all of these are Deutsch plugs. They're quite stiff, but if you just give them a little bit of a tug, you can pull them out like that. So each of these guys, you'd have to pop them off. You disconnect the two connections here and take your enemy A2000 connection off. You'd pull that unit off the wall. You'd match the dip switches that we've got up the top there and you'd put the new unit in. You don't need to do any programming whatsoever with this system because what it does is that every module, every screen, every keypad, everything that you've got on that system holds the configuration of that network. So when you have a system like this that the unit goes down, it's very unlikely to happen, but if it was to happen, all you need to do is match your dip switches there, put the new module in, it'll write itself from the network and you're good to go. You don't need to do any programming whatsoever. It's really, really nice. Okay guys, so we'll go through the last part of your system here, which is the keypad, which will be next to your bed space there. So really nice keypad, these ones. You can do quite a lot with them. Um, obviously we've got them all labeled up so we know what each of our circuits are doing. Um, these do come with a label kit. So if you ever were to lose one of these labels or something was to happen, let us know. We can replace the label kit for you. It's not a big drama. Now with these, I set them to green. Um, generally when you get the van, these may be red or green, depending on how they've been set up. If you don't like the color, really quick and easy, you just press the power button and press that camp mode button, which is button one there to cycle through our different colorations. Uh, you can, yeah, I think there's about 17 or 18 of them in total. So there's, there's quite a few. I stick with Enerdrive Green because it looks really nice, but you, know, you might not like what I choose. So again, you can make it whatever you need to. Um, with the modes up here, so you can see the indicator will show us what where mode we're in. You can also see that our ceiling lights and our bath light are both eliminated there as well, which means that these two circuits are on. Now, if I was to, you know, I can turn those ones off there as well. So it just shuts those particular systems down. Same deal when I turn them on, you can tell that these two are, are linked together. Same deal when I go to our night mode as an example, you can tell that all of our lighting zones there have just dimmed down for us really quick and easy. Now. 
the the one that we need to touch on here is our sleep mode so you can tell when i've touched my sleep mode there our illumination light has actually gone off and all of these backlights have gone off as well and our screen has also gone dark now the reason for that is obviously you're going to bed you don't want to have lights and everything like that turned on now the other part of this is you can tell that our lights in the van are still on now that's because we've got a 30 second delay on those lights so it gives you time to get into bed get ready for bed and everything else now if you were to wake up in the night and you needed to say go to the bathroom or whatnot you can simply tap the power button there and you can see that our lights have come back on here you can see that our illumination is on for our sleep mode but i need to go to the bathroom so i'm just going to press my bathroom light like that and away we go now that being said, if I need to then turn that off because I've come back to bed, single button press will turn that one off. And then when I want to turn this backlighting off again, you just tap the sleep mode once more and away we go. It's really quick and easy to operate this one. And when you wake up in the morning, single button puts us in camp mode. We're ready for the day. So guys, we went over it before. If we ever need to do an update to these particular units, the easiest way is to do it via the USB that's on the back of the screen. Now, removing these screens, there's a metal retention in behind, and there's a couple of little latches on either side that we're just gonna pop. So just to pop those ones off so the screen comes clear of the housing, you just need a little flat blade screwdriver. It's quite quick and easy. You're just gonna press on one side. You can see the screen's popping away quite clearly there. So now that I've got that side off, let's pop this side. A little bit more difficult, just because it's so close to the wall. So once you've got those two latches popped, the screen will come clear like that. Now, there is a fair bit of cable back here. It's bound up a little bit, but it's quick and easy to pop that one out. And then on the bottom of the screen here, you can see we've got our power feed coming in. And we've got our USB that we want to use there, which is the one that we're gonna pop the USB into. Once you pop the USB in, it's really quick and easy. All you need to do is just go to your settings up the top here, down to the settings, into the advanced option, and then you've got we'll want to write the configuration to the network. And if we were to upgrade a favorites package, which is all the displays that we see, we'll do a load of favorites package. When you go into these options in here, there'll be an option which says USB media and you just select on that one and that's all good to go. Yep. So putting the screen back in guys, uh, just as simple as taking it out. You just want to pop it in at the base like that. So you keep it fairly firm at the base and you just want to press in at the top. Just got to make sure that when you put it in at the bottom, there we go, now it's in the clips. And then you can see it just pops back into place there. Really easy to pull. So, all right, so um, with the system, guys, uh, this one here is one of our new C zone boards. So, really, really cool new system for us. So, you've got two of our new MPPT 40 amp solar controllers. Now, these two here, we're actually producing some pretty wicked figures right now. We're almost offsetting the usage of our aircon, um, including the load of the fridges and everything else in the caravan. Um, so these two units, one of these guys is producing 40, the other one's just under it at the moment, which is wicked. Now, Tyson's particular van, this unit usually comes with a singular DC to DC. Uh, Tyson having the RAM, we've actually got a second one up the top here just to maximize our input while we're driving. Uh, 100 amp AC charger, probably not gonna use that one a heap because we're gonna be free camping quite a bit, but it's up there when we're on caravan sites and everything. Now, going through the sort of business end of this unit here, you can see we've got our two solar breakers here. Now, these two solar breakers relate to each of the controllers. So the first one is the first solar controller. The second one is the second unit. So these two here are your actual solar feeds coming down from the roof into these particular units to output our current. And then we've got the rest of our fusing up the top here for the outputs of our chargers. Uh, DC to DCs and everything else in the system there and then our main breakers which are isolating the rest of the system So if you ever were to put this van into storage as such you would just simply need to break these two circuits here That would isolate the system Now to do this best we would always suggest that you isolate your solars first Turn off as much as you can in the van so that there's nothing turned on when you go to separate the actual system from your batteries once that's done, you're really minimizing the load of the system, so you'll be good to just run the system and let it sit. You don't need to worry about it. It can maintain its own charge for quite a few months without a problem. Suggest probably once every three months or so if you're putting the van in storage for longer than 30 days, just to make sure that you're constantly checking that system. If you are gonna store it on power, make sure you check it regularly because things happen out of our control. Circuit breakers on our solar could trip when we're relying on the solar to keep the system charged up. The system goes flat without our knowledge. Same deal with our mains charger. If we were hooked up to mains power, the main circuit breaker was to trip in the shed for whatever reason, then we're you know going to be in a world of hurt because our batteries have gone flat. They may not be able to be recovered. You know, there's a number of things that can happen. So we always say, make sure you store it. If you're going to store it on power, check it regularly every couple of days to a week at most. 
if you're going to store it for longer than say 14 to 30 days you really want to isolate that system make sure it's fully charged then isolate everything off so you're good to store it for whatever period you need to now moving a little bit further along here we've got this this guy here the blue unit so this is actually our master shunt so this is what gives us all of our state of charge figures so that's uh directly uh, connected to our screen and everything there and part of our c-zone network um, now with tyson's van uh, everyone's van will be slightly different layout so this unit here we've actually got one battery on this side of the couch space and we've got another two which are just on the other side here underneath his bed space 2600 watt inverter hidden over the other side there giving us all of our power to run everything in the van but yeah if you ever have any questions about any of the systems um feel free to give us a call we usually all the manuals are there for you guys if you can't get a hold of us but as always just give us a call we're always more than happy to help out and whatever questions you may have we'll try to answer to the best of our ability thanks guys